At this place in history, we're in Montpelier with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, we're on the State House lawn, and this cannon and the reason why it's here are what bring us here this week. Uh, yeah, Mike. So why why is there a naval gun yeah. on the lawn of a landlocked U.S. state? Doesn't make sense. It right. doesn't make sense. There is a reason, yeah. and uh, we're going to go up onto the porch of the State House. But we have Andrew Liptak with us. Uh, Andrew works with me at the Vermont Historical Society and happens to be a bit of a military history expert. So uh, he's going to chat t with us today about why those naval guns are sitting out here on the lawn. So a bit of a mystery. The two naval guns are from the Battle of Manila Bay, which is part of the Spanish-American War, and they were... Um, part of the battle that was led by, at the time, Commodore George Dewey, who was a Montpelier native. He was actually born right across the street from the State House and was, by all accounts, a wild child. He has, mm -hmm. in his uh, diaries and, or his, his autobiography, he talked about how he would pelt his teachers with snowballs and, and cause a lot of pranks. Um, he was eventually shipped off to Norwich University in Norwich, Vermont, um, and then spent a couple of years there before heading off to the U.S. Naval Academy. Um, and then from there, he went to, um, he, he joined the Navy, um, was part of the Civil War, didn't really have a distinguished career until a little bit later, and then uh, worked his way up the ranks um, and to the uh, Spanish-American War. So when we think of the Spanish-American War, I think a, a lot of folks, you know, kind of that, that fate, that fog of history, think back and say, oh, Teddy Roosevelt, Rough Riders. San Juan Hill. San Juan yeah. Hill, you know, Cuba. But we're talking about the Pacific. So what was going on over there? So Spain held colonies all over the world, including the Philippines. And what Dewey was tasked with was taking a squadron of ships and neutralizing that Spanish fleet. Um, so he sailed into Manila Bay, uh, 1898, uh, and basically destroyed it in one one go. They they sailed in in the morning and basically began firing on uh, the Spanish uh, emplacements and warships and destroyed them. They only, they only lost uh, one person uh, due to a heart attack on his own ship. And so famous in its time that that image of, of Dewey standing on the bridge of his ship entering Manila Harbor is in the Vermont State House. It is. And he's known for this, this really famous words, you may fire when ready, Gridley, which is what kicked off the battle at about five in the morning. Uh, the level of fame that he had was incredible. Um, we have artifacts in the... Uh, at the Vermont Historical Society uh, with bearing his image. So plates, medals, uh, bars of soap. Um, and the reason for that was because of that victory at Manila Bay. It was a decisive uh, battle in the Spanish-American War. Commodore Dewey's heroism at Manila Bay got him promoted in 1899 to a rank that no one else in the United States Navy has ever held. We'll look at that part of his story next week at This Place in History.